watched a bunch of music films, and I think I'm going to split it into two different reviews, mostly because um, they, there's a lot to say. So the first one was D.A. Pennebaker's Don't Look Back. Somehow, I had never seen this Bob Dylan documentary. I've seen the, um, the, the Martin Scorsese one. Um, I'd seen that one. Uh, when I was in grad school, actually, or maybe even earlier. Um, but somehow, because they used to be on Netflix. Netflix used to have all kinds of stuff. Oh, my goodness. Remember those days. But anyways, I had never seen it. So um, I was like, well, we're going we're gonna to knock out all these music movies the day before Thanksgiving. So the this one follows Bob Dylan's 1965 tour in England, and various other folk stars show up, like Joan Baez and Donovan and... In the background, you can see um, Allen Ginsberg and all kinds of stuff. And if you are familiar with Todd Haynes's I'm Not Here, um, I'm Not There, sorry, I'm Not There, um, several of the, the, like the entire Cate Blanchett part of that film is based on his appearances in this documentary, pretty much. And what I noticed was in the um, Cate Blanchett iteration of this version of Bob Dylan. Her version of Bob Dylan is a bit charming in his um, dickishness. In this documentary, he's just a dick. I enjoyed watching it, even though I was like, why do you got to be so mean to everybody? Um, so, I mean, I feel like if I were Bob Dylan, I wouldn't have wanted to be captured at, <laughs> at this stage of my life when I was such a, like a, Enfant terrible, if you will. Um, but maybe he's always a dick. I don't know. I haven't um, really seen much of him later in life other than the Scorsese doc, which I can't remember much of anymore. Um, I liked the way it was shot. It's got, obviously, some very iconic moments, like the moment um, where Bob Dylan's holding the signs. And um, it's innovative in the places Penna Baker was able to put the camera inside, you know, uh, moving vehicles and all kinds of stuff, um, and it's it's important because it documents this change from Bob Dylan being a straight up folk singer to his sort of hard rock phase. Now he he blended all of these things, and um, society wasn't quite ready for artists to to experiment and try multiple things to express themselves, and and Dylan was a person who really blazed that trail. Um, and this is an important doc that it captures him doing that. Um, I liked the moment where he's talking, I think, to Joan Baez, and and someone was trying, one of them was trying to ask him if he um, cared for cared about people, and he's like, "Well, we all have different definitions of what those things mean, what those words mean." And and she's like, "Well, surely we know what people mean means." And he's like, "Do we?" And it was. So so good because I was like, I see what you're saying, and that's amazing. Because especially in 19, you know, 65, we didn't necessarily, and especially here in America, treat all people the same. So uh, of course, we don't have the same definitions of what what are people. Um, there's another sequence where he is um, lusting over an electric guitar. That is is quite quite a lovely moment. Um, so I really enjoyed this documentary. It's shot in stark black and white, and Again, I didn't find um, Dylan very uh, charming in this as the way I'm like the way he is in um, Kate Blanchett's version of him, but uh, I still quite enjoyed this film. Uh, it's, it's a great look at an interesting and important part in a, one of the 20th century's most intriguing artists. Uh, the next one I watched, I, I know, like, you're like, how have you not seen this? Like, you're fit, you're fired. Is from right around the same time period, this is 1964's A Hard Day's Night. How have I not seen A Hard Day's Night is what you're asking. Okay, the thing is, I've seen Help, all of Help, and I've seen part of The Yale Submarine. And I actually owned A Hard Day's Night on, on cassette tape. Way back in the day. Cassette tape, yes. I bought it. The, the Beatles were my fave 
uh, band when I was in high school, and so I had the cassette tape, and, um, because cassette tapes were still a thing when I was in high school, okay, they were, you could get into when I was in college, you could get, um, um, what was it? Uh, that Wes Anderson one with the with the sea adventure, um, Life Aquatic. So my mom bought my brother a the Life Aquatic on cassette tape for Christmas one year, and I will never forget everyone's look like what. But apparently he had added a cassette tape to his Amazon wish list instead of a DVD. But it was hilarious because this was like 2005, and it was like cassette tapes were still a thing. Hard Day's Night. I had it on cassette tape, but I never managed to actually watch it because I'm an idiot. And, um, and then, you know, it's been on Filmstruck forever, and I was well, an idiot, and so I didn't watch it, and didn't watch it, and I was, like, watching the music docs today, so I watched it, well, it's not a music doc, obviously, Hard Day's Night is, um, a day in the life of the Beatles, where the Beatles are sort of playing up to their personas of themselves, and, um, it's directed by Richard Lester, who was one of the great British New Wave directors, he directed a whole bunch of very important films of this era in British cinema. Um, the Beatles are all, all unlike Bob Dylan, they're all very charming and they're all living up to their sort of different, as I said, personas. And um, Ringo is this, this sort of outcasty short one. And, and George is the swoony one who's just very dreamy and quiet. And George is always my favorite. Um, and Paul has his, his grandfather that he's dealing with, um, who is um, sort of an Irish upstart not really Paul's grandfather. Um, so they they ride a train, they get chased by fans, they sing a bunch of songs, they're trying to get um, ready for an evening's performance that's going to be televised, they have a fight with the television director, they lose Ringo, um, other shenanigans ensue. Mostly I found it very charming and a fun little comedy and it had very very British humor to it, um, which is take it or leave it because British humor is very, very, you know, unique and not everyone, not for everybody. But I quite enjoyed it, and obviously it had some of my favorite um, songs from the Beatles in it. And it was nominated for two Academy Awards. It was nominated for its screenplay, and it was nominated for uh, an award category that didn't exist, doesn't exist anymore, but existed for a hot minute called Best Adaption or Treatment. Um, that was when there were all these musicals and they would take like bits of the musical song and turn it into the score and things like that. It was a category they had for about 20 years in the 60s, 70s. But um, I just really, I really enjoyed this film. And as a Beatles lover, I can finally claim my membership again because I've finally seen it. Um, so both these films are on Filmstruck. They're both available from um, Criterion on DVD, I think, and Blu-ray, but definitely DVD. And you can rent them, and they're they're highly available, and both very interesting looks at iconic uh, musical performers at pivotal times in their life in England, and um, whether either or are an accurate depiction of what any of these artists were really like is up for debate. But I think cinema, no matter if it's a documentary, as in Don't Look Back, or um, uh, uh, mostly fictionalized um, film like A Hard Day's Night, you're you're never going to get the real artist regardless. Um, so it's, it's fascinating. They'll get two different ways to represent the aversion of these artists. Um, so I quite enjoyed both of them. And now I feel like I need to rewatch I'm Not Here, I'm Not There again. So I'll probably do that because in I'm Not There, there's a moment where the Beatles show up in their Hard Day's Night-esque persona. So what I'm saying is you do a triple feature and do a Hard Day's Night, I'm Not There. No, Hard Day's Night, Don't Look Back, I'm Not There. It would be really fascinating. Um, triple feature ideas. Maybe someday I'll get to program that. Uh, Thanksgiving. Um, I have two more films I'm going to talk about in a second. I have to go sneeze. So have a good day. Eat way too much. Eat all the pie. That's what Thanksgiving's for.